Drilling down today with Red Star Gold. Red Star trades on the symbol RGC in the venture and RGCTF over the counter in the States. And I've got with me the president and CEO, Peter Ball. Peter, as we dive into your story here at the very top, as always, management. Uh, why don't you go ahead and lay out the management team at Red Star? Yeah, thanks, Rob. Uh, good question. Management's key for, for a junior mining company. Uh, what you need to bring, I think, is a diverse group uh, of individuals. Myself as an engineer, uh, graduated mining school back in the 1980s. Our executive chairman, investment banker, CFA from Montreal, Canada, resides in, in London, England now. Our CFO, chartered accountant, he's, he's been in the business for 25, 25 years. And our vice president of exploration, he's been in the business for 15, 20 years. All solid people. Again, with a diverse group, it, it allows you to, to not only uh, look at all facets of, of the mining company and the avenues you're pushing forward the company on, but it also allows you to you know, complete capital raises to fund the company going forward. And, you know, another key part of the company is marketing um, the company, our company and team is, is, um, brings a lot of experience on that side also. As a follow-up, uh, why don't you lay out the board for Red Star? Yeah, another facet, uh, of course, is uh, the board of directors that supports the management team, uh, manages uh, and sets the expectations for the company uh, each and every year. So our board, again, other than myself, um, Jacques Vancourt is the executive chairman. He used to run uh, the BMO and HSBC desks in, in London for over 30 years, raised close to $35 billion. Of do- billions of dollars. Um, he's a CFA out of Montreal, Canada resides in London right now, as I mentioned earlier. Second uh, on our board, um, uh, George Ireland. He uh, runs Geologic Resource Partners out of Boston. He's had a stellar career in investing, managing, uh, and brings a strong technical side of the business to uh, Red Star. Uh, he's very familiar with epithermal projects. He uh, followed a company called Andean Resources in Argentina, Cerro Negro, very similar to Onga. Uh, another key individual to our board is Mr. Sean Keenan. He used to work for Resource Capital Funds as an analyst. Uh, now he runs his own company out of Australia. A uh, very strong analytical mind and also a strong geologist to help us on the technical side. And finally, uh, Mr. Ken Booth. He used to be an um, investment banker. He worked at BMO Capital Markets, RBC Capital, Scotia. He runs his own company, another epithermal company. So a solid group of individuals. They take ownership in the company and what they do in helping forward, uh, pushing Red Star forward. You've got a nice list of uh, some major shareholders at Red Star. Why don't you go ahead and lay out uh, uh, where they got involved here and uh, who they are. Our major shareholders um, that control about 62% of, of the shares of Red Star are made up of what I consider the, probably the top or some of the top seven gold investors in the mining and gold space. Uh, first of all, we'll talk with our largest shareholder, Mr. Jacques Vancourt in London. He controls about 15% of the company. He started investing in the company around the four or six cent range. He's participated in every financing since the day he uh, got involved with the company. Uh, second, uh, right, right up behind uh, Mr. Vancouver is George Ireland. Again, he runs Geologic Resource Partners out of Boston. He's a strong um, mining investor. He's invested in, invested in multiple projects globally. He's chairman and, and, and been uh, a technical advisor to many groups who've invested in the mining space. He controls about 10. Uh, third, right behind um, Mr. George Ireland is Eric Sprott. Uh, well-known uh, gold and gold bug uh, out of Toronto, Canada. Uh, he got involved at about 10 cents. It's great to have him on board and, and his team, and, and uh, he follows closely what we're doing. Uh, out of Europe, we have Mr. Eric Meyer. He runs Gold 2000. Gold 2000 is one of the top-ranked ran- funds out of Zurich, Switzerland. He controls just under 7, uh, 7%. Uh, if we stay over in, in Europe, we have OD Asset Management, uh, they're a group, a very, very large uh, multi-billion dollar fund. They got involved with the company also a couple of years in, in the 5 to uh, 10 cent range. Uh, Ralph Aldis, one of the most uh, respected portfolio managers with U.S. Global out of the U.S. Um, Ralph's been uh, participating in every financing. He, Again, he's a geologist, really understands what's happening up at Unga. And uh, again, he's a uh, 6 7% holder of, of Red Star and uh, staying in the U.S. Uh, Gabelli Gold, Chris Mancini. And the guys over in New York, again, participating in, in pretty much all the financings. Again, they they vetted the asset on a technical basis. So these seven groups control about 60 to 62%. And if you throw what the management owns in, 
the company, uh, which includes a couple of the funds, we're, we're up to about 27% control of the company. So solid investment by management and uh, seven top funds. Moving on to the financial side, what's the cash position of Red Star and any other investments or uh, the debt structure of the company? It's always good when you're with a company that you can tell everybody that you have zero debt. So we don't owe anybody. We don't have any payables. Every two weeks, we we ensure all our uh, vendors are properly paid on time. Uh, cash balance, uh, as of the end of July, we're about four and a half or about four million dollars. Uh, and quickly touching on another couple investments, we own 19.5% of NV Gold um, out of Nevada. Uh, they're also uh, drilling in Nevada. They're one of the largest shareholders, again, is Eric Sprott. One of their lead technical advisors is Quinton Henney. The CEO controls 20% of the company. And, of course, Ralph Aldis from U.S. Global is also in with the group. Um, so our equity investment into that company is about $2.4 million as of uh, middle of October, giving us a working capital position of approximately $6.5 million. And we still retain 30% of the Newman Todd Gold Project in Ontario in the Red Lake camp. About 11 to $12 million was spent on the project. Numerous high-grade intersection, intersections and uh, Confederation Minerals is now pushing forward their CFM on the TSX Venture. They have a market cap, 9 or $10 million giving us a uh, uh, perceived market cap value in that company of, of 3 to $4 million. Unga is the uh, flagship of uh, Red Star. Why don't you give us a uh, brief overview of Unga? The Unga project is an intermediate epithermal sulfidation district scale uh, gold project. We own 100% of it. We own, it's 240 square kilometers in size. A little bit about the history, it was host of the first underground gold mine in Alaska's history back in 1888 to 1918, uh, removed 150,000 plus ounces at 10 plus grams per ton gold. Um, they left in 1918, there was a fire that destroyed their building in, in San Francisco, um, and uh, the cyanide cost went up uh, 10 times back in, back in the day. A little, a little deeper, just touching quickly on the project. There's up to 14 different gold zones, up to 35 to 40 line kilometers of combined strike length. We're only touching uh, just the one part of it, which is Schumigan. We're starting to look at the district, but a very interesting uh, project. As a follow-up, uh, infrastructure is very key, obviously, in a project. Uh, I know you've, uh, you're up in Alaska. Uh, why don't you explain to shareholders and uh, prospective investors on uh, – what uh, type of infrastructure you have there as far as uh, the viability of getting to the project? One of the key parts is of any project is what's your infrastructure a access, what's your temperature uh, and location? Uh, what part of the world? Is it politically stable? So we're in Alaska. So first of all, a lot of people think of Alaska, cold, wintry, can't get there, always iced up. One key thing about the Unga Gold Project, latitude 55 degrees, always temperate. It averaged warmer on the island than Vancouver, British Columbia uh, last winter. Uh, there's a one-mile paved airstrip at site. There's a deep-sea port facility at site. It's at tidewater, and uh, it's temperate. It, it, if, if it snows, it's gone the next day, uh, a beautiful location. And one thing I'll just tie into this question also is uh, native or First Nation relations is uh, fantastic. We have great relations with the Aliyu Corporation, Schumingen Corporation, and the Unga Corporation, which are key to the involvement uh, and advancement of the asset going forward. Let's uh, drill down a little bit deeper into Unga here. Um, why don't you highlight the, the main uh, characteristics of the project and uh, what uh, basically uh, kind of success you've had that determines that you're going to move forward on this? So one key thing, uh, over the last uh, year and a half, we've had some strategic investors come in, finance the company, and the number one goal with uh, the use of proceeds for the funds in our treasury is to uncover and uh, further understand uh, the district of the Unga Gold Project. There's multiple gold zones. We're focused on the Schumigan Gold Zone. It's about a kilometer long. We're testing a long strike. We're testing at depth this fall. We've, uh, we'll be starting a program and, and be commenced uh, before Christmas with assays coming out, really just trying to understand one zone, which is only about one kilometer of the known 35 or 40, 
historically, there's been some incredible intersections that have brought the attention of, of many uh, interested parties and funds and newsletter writers, uh, where 12% of every hole that's been drilled intersected grades over 50 grams, 25% over 25 grams. Uh, we've had intersections of 1.9 meters of 200 grams, 7.3 of 12 uh, 29 meters of 15, so good intersections, right at surface, narrow, high, uh, narrow grade, um, narrow width and high grade uh, system. And of course, we heard about the drill program. What's the burn rate of the company when uh, obviously you've got drills turning, but uh, when that stops, uh, um, how's the company operate? Uh, we're right in the middle of a program right now. We're going to spend about one million U.S. when we're not drilling. Our burn rate there. In the company, uh, there's really just myself and the VP of exploration. So our, our burn rate is probably less than half a million dollars per year annually for uh, everybody to employ to, to keep the doors open. Well, Catalyst and Newsflow uh, drive stocks. Uh, I want you to lay out your uh, end of your 17 and uh, heading on into early 18. So going forward, as again, I mentioned, we'll be having a program in the fall of, of uh, 2017. Uh, we'll be doing 2,500 to 3,000 meters, testing three to upwards of four different gold zones, We'll be having assays probably out, out before Christmas, doing some modeling, putting together a technical report, and um, getting ready to come back up to site probably in March or April of uh, 2018. So it's going to be a busy next six months, and we're hoping for a busier 2018. And where will that treasury be uh, year-end 2017? Yeah, so at the end of uh, 2017, January or December 31st, we expect to have uh, just over $2 million in the bank. Uh, and with a low burn rate, uh, we expect to make that last a long time, ensure the money gets put into the ground uh, and making work for our shareholders. We mentioned earlier uh, some newsletter writers. Uh, why don't you break down uh, who's covering uh, Red Star? Who's, uh, who's really following this story? So we've had, a, we've had some interesting um, newsletter writers and, and analysts take a look or, or wanting to mention or cover the story. A few of the names out there are Byron King. He's from uh, the U.S. He's, he writes for the Jim Rickards Gold Speculator, very respected uh, geologist, Harvard graduate. He's starting to uh, get involved with the company and follow. He just actually came up to site in September. Uh, Jeb ha Handwerger from uh, Gold Trades, uh, GoldStockTrades.com. Uh, he actually just also got involved from the summer's activity, really likes what we're doing and where we're heading. Bob Moriarty from, from Europe, John Kaiser. Uh, Thibaut Lapoutrier um, from Belgium, from uh, CaesarsReport.com, and also we were mentioned by Gwen Preston from ResourceMaven.ca, and an analyst has a uh, buy recommendation, uh, Mike Neheiser from Scarsdale Equities out of New York. So good following, good bunch of um, ladies and gentlemen that are um, uh, following us. Well, I want to thank Peter Ball, President and CEO of Red Star Gold, for uh, letting us drill down into his story. Thanks for taking the time, Peter. Thanks, Rob, and I'm looking forward to talking again.